Boxing has had its fair share of unusual moments. And some maniac has attempted to parachute here. From parachute intruders to double knockouts, flips and tricks, mid-fight haircuts, you name the scenario and I guarantee at one point we've seen something closely comparable throughout the sport's rich history. This is your favorite cigarette? We toast you. <laughs> Yet, there is one instance, one strange occurrence that unless it was filmed, no one would believe. The 1993 World Heavyweight title fight, you heard that right, title fight, between the WBO champion Tommy Morrison and a guy that was sat in the crowd washing down a hot dog with a few cold beers. Not as scheduled, in fact, it was never scheduled at all. It's a bizarre piece of history that not enough people know about. Allow me to explain. A lovable boxer from Green Bay with a Rocky Balboa type of opportunity. Some of you might be wondering why I didn't just cover this in my Tommy Morrison's Greatest Hits video from a few months back, and the truth is, I was planning to. But once I looked into the fight with a bit more detail, it was clear a one or two minute segment wasn't going to cut it. For those of you that perhaps have had no idea about the history leading to this event, Tommy Morrison was a top heavyweight prospect from the late 80s that built a considerable fan base for not only dominant displays in the ring, but likewise for the way he presented himself outside of it, exuding a media star aura by the little bits and pieces of airtime and publication he was given. But I tell you what, I will be a heavyweight champion as well, so boxing fans, watch out. Then, in stepped Hollywood and Sylvester Stallone, gifting the young man from the small county of Delaware an opportunity of a lifetime, the antagonistic lead in the most prominent sports film franchise in history, Rocky. Uh, how about you try to manage me? Manage? Yeah. Unless you think I ain't got nothing going. While Rocky V wasn't received as positively as its predecessors, Morrison's role as Tommy Gunn became one of the series' most intriguing characters, ultimately leading to significantly higher interest into the actor's real-world endeavors, which, as a gift for Rocky fans, was that of a genuine rising contender with a lot of talent and promise. Tommy the Duke Morrison comes to boxing naturally. Now boxing big shot Bill Caton is grooming Tommy for a shot at heavyweight champion Mike Tyson and it could be the grudge match of the century. Morrison did go through bumps in the road as all boxers do. Nevertheless, his hard work and dedication was rewarded in June of 1993, defeating the legendary George Foreman for the WBO title in what was Tommy's most irreproachable performance to date. Good combination from Morrison. A punch-perfect display put Tommy in the direct firing line for a showdown with the consensus number one heavyweight in the world, Lennox Lewis. Yet, as is often the case for newly crowned champs, a scheduled homecoming fight was put into place a mere two months later, where Tommy would face off with the ring's 1986 prospect of the year, Mercury Mike Williams. So I'm a good jab, constant good jab. I'm going to push him back. I'm going to make him go back. As you can see here, ESPN had the pre-fight feature playing for the home viewing audience. However, while the tape played, the crew behind the scenes scurried as they feared a complete collapse in the event as Tommy's scheduled opponent Mike Williams refused to leave his dressing room after, according to top-ranked promoter Bob Arum, declining to take a pre-fight drug test. There were various theories as to why Williams refused to fight, but it mattered very little in the heat of the moment. They needed someone to get in the ring, because as much as the home crowd loved Tommy, they weren't prepared to pay 20 bucks to watch him shadow box. From his dressing room, Morrison announced that he would refund all the paying customers in attendance. And once that news hit the crowd, one man took it upon himself to make sure that the show continued. Hello everybody from Green Bay. I love you mom and dad and everybody. Hey. All right, this is Meet the Doughboy Tim Tomaszek a local heavyweight gatekeeper of sorts that had been around the block and primarily used as a stepping stone for legitimate rising contenders such as Franz Botha and Seamus McDonough. Coming out a window. <laughs> McDonough with a combination in the right hand sends Tomaszek down. Despite his inconsequential stature in the division, Tomaszek had already made a name for himself among the hard cores as an easygoing goofball, someone that, if he didn't have a long list of victories on his record, you would think is a paid actor or a comedian of sorts. My family, but the dope boy, he's a, he's a tough kid. He's, you've seen him before on TV, you've done some of his fights. He's a tough kid, he's a comer. Fast forward to August 1993. Tomaszek was celebrating his birthday by going to watch his favorite boxer in the flesh, Tommy Morrison. Four or five beers went down as the undercard progressed, and by the time that jeopardizing news broke, he was drunk, full of snacks, and already planning his night after boxing with friends. 
Whether it was the alcohol in his system or the promise of $2,500, he stood up and took the shortest notice fight in championship history. And by the time the pre-fight feature had ended, Morrison vs. Tomashek for the WBO title was born. So Tim Tomashek and Tommy Morrison and Tomashek with a chance to see if the old slipper fits. It took some explaining from the ESPN commentary team for the fans at home, yet before you had a chance to turn over the station, an out-of-shape, tipsy, large-as-life Tomashek made his way to the ring, which quickly turned into unmissable TV. Yeah, for this, him, this is a moment in the sun that was not expected. Morrison was just as shocked as everyone else as he was expecting a 6'4 African-American slickster in the opposite corner, and he was instead met by a burping and smirky journeyman that lived just a few neighborhoods away. Now, you know, I really like Tommy Morrison. Yes. I think he's a quality guy and, and a good champion, and I think he's, he has a chance to go far in this sport, but I love Tim Tomashek. <laughs> As much as I can imagine this will crush a few hearts, it's better that I break the news now. Tomashek didn't go on to win the fight. To be blunt, that was never going to be the case. There are levels to this sport after all. That's not to say that Doughboy didn't have a few tricks up his sleeve. He knows that hook is... <laughs> Tim's getting his, his, uh, his, his uh, moment here, isn't he? And meanwhile, Tommy no, Morrison's no, starting no, to no, whack no, him with left hook. Tomashek's going to make him mad, but... The pro Morrison crowd didn't respond to the antics as I'm sure Tomashek would have wanted. Tommy himself sure as hell didn't appreciate it, as he frustratedly beat his man to the ground in the fourth round. Good double left hand again, that hurt Tomashek. And down goes Tomashek on the garage of Clinton. Although Tim looked like he was still enjoying himself, his corner called a halt to the action, which led to one of the most unusual post-fight interviews I've ever seen. Technically, he did fight very well. It was a little frustrating, uh, some of the annex and things. I mean, he's a good guy, but some of what he was doing had to be a little distressing. Well, I think he was trying to frustrate me a little bit, but, uh, you know, that might have worked three years ago, but I think I'm sign showing signs of uh, a very mature, uh, much more dedicated athlete, and because of that, we're able to get through situations like this. Tim, a lot of times, we've had you on only once or twice. You've been anxious to get on again. You didn't think it would be in this circumstance. Oh, no, Jeepers Creepers, not, not at all. Everybody who works doesn't even probably know I'm on. I do uh, work at Chapco. Hello, everybody from Green Bay. I love you, Mom and Dad and everybody eh? All right, this is a big moment for you. Now, you did perform pretty well there for a few rounds. His power was really the oh, thing that made it. Well, I'm a good-looking guy. Can't you see? Jesus. <laughs> but uh, he's too strong. Eh? He's a very good man. And all the Morrisons, I know everybody, you know, and they're just too strong, too big, eh? A few Jeepers Creepers moments later, Al Bernstein closed out the interview by asking Tomashek what went wrong in his previous title fight at Cruiserweight a couple of years prior. Here tonight, now you made an effort. I gotta ask you something. Why don't you get down and fight in the Cruiserweight division? Oh, boy. We like you might, here too much. You eh? might, you well, might we fought not the world champion, remember? We I fought against the Wamba. And uh, you, you went the they distance me. with him. And they, I know. They tricked they me. Trick you? Uh, free wine on the flight. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Tim, congratulations. Thank you. I love everybody. Hello, Green Bay chapter. Tim Tomasek, he and I are going out on the the uh, Borscht Belt circuit next week, I think, with a guy. Yeah, thank you, Tim. The Tomashek story didn't entirely end there, however, as national press picked up on the unusual character that was the Doughboy, and late-night hosts such as David Letterman had him on to see what the guy was all about. Well, our next guest uh, spends most of his time uh, working at the uh, Shopco. If there's one thing this interview proved, it was Tomashek might have fought more as in drunk, but his post-fight interview was a sober representation of his peculiar personality. Do you want to fight uh, Tommy Morrison? And I, I've been through this many times, yeah. so I go, jeepers, I don't want to, you know, fight him. It's not going to come through. Yeah. So all of a sudden he goes, yeah, well, so all of a sudden, jeepers, I have to miss the tailgate and the whole works. <laughs> If you want to know more about Tommy Morrison's story, I'd recommend my video from a few months back. As for Tomashek, I searched long and hard for fight films to show you guys more clips, particularly post-fight interview clips, but to no avail. Tomashek, ladies and gentlemen, we gotta go, we'll see you tomorrow. A few years after the Morrison bout, Tomashek retired, where today he resides as a local cult hero in a small Wisconsin town. For those interested, there are a few bits of recent media on YouTube that shows he hasn't changed much almost 30 years later. There, so. A lot of women said they saw you fight. Ain't one to brag, you know. Yeah. That's why I'm still single. <laughs> nice. Until next time, this was Classic Recaps here on BLTV Extra. <laughs> I've seen everything now. A boxer who says after being beaten to a pulp, Jeepers. Creepers, not, not at all. Jeepers. So all of a sudden, Jeepers. Jeepers, the oh, thing that's made it. Jeepers. Oh, it's Jeepers. Oh, Jeepers. No, Jeepers. Oh, Jeepers. 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 Well, yeah. One more Jeepers, and I'm going to have to take away a point. <laughs>